All right, we're here to taste a Kinoto, a limited release from the Lark Distillery down in Tasmania. So stay tuned. This is um, a really interesting bottle we've got our hands on. It's uh, a new release that they've been working on that we're very lucky to get one of the first uh, bottles in the batch. Uh, we're gonna give it a taste, talk about why it's unique, and uh, hopefully you guys out there will also have a chance to taste, because uh, this is going up on our store in the next couple of hours, um, so you can take a look at it there. Should we give it a try, Joel? Exactly. Let's go. All right, so this is limited to 1,800 bottles, is that right? Yeah, 1,800 bottles, so not very many. We've got our hands on a nice little allocation for our, uh, our subscribers, so. And I have to say, it's beautiful packaging, like that illustration and, yeah. and even the box here, they, they do some amazing work with it. Yeah, the box is outstanding. So as a collector's item, uh, definitely something to appreciate, not only the, the liquid, but the presentation, uh, how it sits on your shelf and, and something to talk about as well. Um, so, Chinoto, is that the best way to pronounce it? Yeah, Chinoto is um, it's an Italian soft drink. We've got a little bottle here. Um, it's actually flavoured, it's kind of like cola, but a little bit more bitter. Still sweet, but bitter at the same time. Um, and the flavour actually mainly comes from uh, it's a type of myrtle from a specific orange tree, so super interesting. Wow. Now, now when I think of like cola, I don't think of that going in a barrel. <laughs> no, so neither do what, I. What happened here? Who thought about this? I don't know. Apparently, head distiller Chris Thompson just had a brainwave that there's these guys down the road from the distillery making this soft drink locally, and right. he was like, what if I just chuck this in a cask? I mean, we kind of see a little bit of experimentation with ginger beer casks and stuff yep. like that, but I've never oh, ever Or even like heard maple of... syrup casks yeah. we've come across before here yeah. at Whiskey Loot. But I've never heard of one like this before. It's pretty outstanding. And it open, opens up the whole like, my mind's just going crazy. You can get like, <laughs> hundreds, and, hundreds and thousands casks. <laughs> you just like <laughs> liquefy the stuff. Yeah, we should give it a taste. Let's go for it. Oh, it's really light on the nose though. It, and it's 49%. I thought that would be is, a yeah. bigger hit. But the flavor profile is quite developed. Yeah, it's very interesting. I get, there's, it's, what's interesting about this one is there's actually a bit of peat in this one, which is pretty right, unusual okay. from, um, from the Lark Distillery. Um, so, or even Tasmanian whiskey in general. Yeah, you know, there's a few, few peat. doing peat, but not, not as much as what uh, you get in this one. There's definitely, uh, it's definitely got that sweet, col almost cola bottle, cola lollies, yeah. you know, the little yeah. candies, yeah, that kind of flavor. Yeah. That brings me back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Very, um, like, grapefruity yeah. and kind of Super blood orange, citrus, obviously. Yeah. Um, but the, the sweet is not, it's kind of there, it's overpowering, but it's not, it, it, you've still got the spice coming through, yeah, so sure. it's actually well, developed, it doesn't feel like it's just one flavor profile, and that's yeah. just on the nose. Yeah. I think the way they've paired that heavy spirit with it, it kind of like helps to balance that sweetness out with those kind of big, bold, smoky notes. It kind yeah. of tames it a little. It's really, really uh, very clever. Now, we should probably um, try this with a, a little bit of water. Would you recommend that at 49%? 49% is kind of one of those ones where you can try it if you want, but I think give it a crack at full strength too. Well, let's give it a crack. <laughs> oh, the first thing that gets me is the texture. Just, I guess there's naturally, because it's seasoned with a soft drink, there's a little bit of extra just residual sugar coming from the cask, yeah. but it gives it that real oily, syrupy mouth coating kind of sensation which just like, it just makes all the flavors like come out in HD. <laughs> yeah, it is very HD. <laughs> it's, um, it, it punches above its weight and, and we don't know the age on this one. So no. it's a bit hard to tell kind of the history there. Um, but yeah, very pronounced flavor. Um, there's lots of kind of overripe fruit and peaches. Yeah, um, a bit of citrus, bit of even like bitter coffiness at the end as well. Um, yeah, it's it's got a nice rhythm to it. Yeah, definitely. And I think what's really nice is on the finish, that kind of syrup 
kind of sensation and the sweetness fades and it really dries out quite nicely so you're not left with like that cloying sweetness yep. at the end. You get that more like oaky, spice, um, earthy kind of flavours coming through. It's really, really nice. And the finish is really quite long. Yeah, I'm like, like it's 15 seconds now. plus. <laughs> like it's just... Yeah, it's amazing. It feels to me more like a bit of a dessert whiskey yeah. than a dinner whiskey. It's not kind of super smoky or kind of, you know, good with steak or something yeah. like that. I can imagine like a like a souffle or like yeah. a, um, you know, a, a banoffee pie or something yeah. like that to kind of balance out this. You've got something really sweet here, but maybe, you know, from a dessert perspective, it doesn't need to be that yeah. sweet. Maybe a little bit citrusy could could bring out the flavour profile. Yeah, as well. definitely. And I think because it's just got such a bold flavour and bold texture, you need something to kind of match that weight um, if you're doing a food pairing for sure. Absolutely. Now, what else do we know about this actual limited release? Are they, are they going to bring it out as a as a standard thing? I mean, we're hearing it to be quite yeah. popular out there in the community. Yeah, so at the moment it's literally just the 1800 bottles. Um, I guess, you know, if it's popular, they might redo it again. If it's not, let's see what happens. So I think they should redo it again. I don't yeah, know about absolutely. you, it's so good. I want to take um, that the rest of that bottle home and <laughs> <laughs> not tell anyone else about it. <laughs> you might have to fight me for it. <laughs> Guys, like this whiskey, it's an absolute stunner. You should definitely check it out on our store. Um, gets the thumbs up from me, that's for sure. Absolutely. Thumbs up from me. I think the last thing to do is probably mix some of this with it and see how we go. <laughs> yeah, let's give the actual... This isn't, obviously, this is San Pellegrino, so it's not the same brand of uh, Kinoto that, that they use to make the whiskey with, but what better way to do the uh, old smoky cokey? Yeah, exactly. You go first. <laughs> Uh, I apologise in advance for this, uh, Bill and Chris. Let's see how we go. Wow. <laughs> That's, That's not bad. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> we should have put a little bit of ice in there maybe. It's a touch on the warm side, yeah, but it's yeah. really good. That's delicious. That's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> if we're not careful, just doing this review will fin finish the whole bottle. <laughs> I think I'm going to go back for more. Wow. <laughs> okay guys, like we said, check it out on the store. It's an absolute winner. We're going to get some more information about the cast directly from, uh, from Bill Lark and Chris Thompson, the head distiller. Um, so keep your eyes peeled. Thanks for joining us. See Cheers. you next time.